And now we're recording. Yep, got it. Got it. Okay. So you can see that I've got two visuals here. Um, and actually, you know what? I'm going to share. Let me just do one more. Oh, no. Okay. Um, you can see. So this is where I'm prepping. And this is me. So I tend to talk here. But you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, I've got a bag here. And I would suggest having a bowl or something to kind of help you hold up your bags, just so that way they don't get too floppy. And whenever I open a bag, I am you're going to see I immediately do this because it helps it stand up taller and um, also keeps the juices or like sauces or whatever from getting around the uh, rim of the um, the what's it called? What is this? The seal. So is that just a regular bag or yep. one of our bags? Okay. Yep. Either way, yeah, it doesn't matter, yeah. So I just like to do that just so it keeps it away from that. And let's see, what are my other big top tips? Couple other things, I tend to not measure too much. I'm an eyeball measure. Um, the cool thing about any of the Tastefully Simple products is that, or excuse me, the seasonings, is the caps are two tablespoons. Oh. I use that as kind of like my guide. So half a cap is one tablespoon. Um, there's also, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, this might be a better view. Um, see how it almost like has a smile. I call it the smile. It's the spout mm -hmm. where the spoon could go. Yeah. I call it the smile. Um, that is, if you fill that part, that's like two teaspoons. Half a smile is one teaspoon. Oh, okay. that's so, easy. Yeah. Just little tricks of the tree. So you don't have to go ahead and measure. And then when it comes to the jars, I'll show you how to kind of gauge the measuring on the jar side too. Okay. Um, all right. I think those are my big tips as we go along. And we're just going to go ahead and follow kind of like the basic oh. instructions where it says make ahead and freeze um, and just kind of go from there and make it happen. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start with ziti and meatballs. And what you want to put in there is your uh, crushed tomatoes and your Mamma Mia marinara sauce. I will also tell you go ahead and put in um all the other pieces too i know it says that you don't have to you can put everything else in other freezer bags go ahead put it all in one bag so i'm putting meatballs crushed tomatoes and the sauce mix yes definitely the that and then if you want you can add the water the and the half and half right now too you don't yeah. have to but i would say you could that's just. Is Hazel there? All right, there's that. My, oh, there we go. Someone's just joining in. Anita, there you are. I knew you were coming, Anita. Hi, Anita. Hi, Anita. Can you hear me? I'm just going to have to wait. Oh, left. Take some of Daddy's in the base or in the garage if you need him. All right. All right. There goes my can. And so a quarter cup of the Mama Mia marinara is going to be two capfuls. Question is, do I already have Mama Mia marinara open? I do not. All right. There we go. Have you ever had the Mamma Mia marinara? I have not. Oh. You know, because I was worried because I'm like, oh, just because, you know, usually when I do ZD, I use sauce. I'm like, oh, ah. they were just tomatoes. Because I didn't look for the recipe book. I'm telling you, this makes me feel very Italian. Because <laughs> I certainly am not. Uh. Um, <laughs> um, it's a nice 
flavor. And what I think makes it different than just like a typical sauce is there is a little red pepper in it. I love um, red pepper. I do too. And it just, for me, that just adds a little extra punch in the flavor. Some people say, oh, it's too spicy. So then I just tell them, you know, just knock it down a little bit, but yep. So that is that. Wait, let's see. We are not going to, I take that back. We are not going to do the half and half with in here. This is it. That's all we're doing. Just the things right there. Half and half comes when you put the pasta in at the end. I actually make these meatballs. I usually do, I do them, uh, like I make two batches of it. And so we'll have it for dinner uh, with like spaghetti and meatballs one night. And then the leftovers, I will, uh, for meatball subs. Okay. Which is always an easy way. And then a lot, of, like I said, a lot of times when I make this, I make it a double batch. I put one right in the freezer just to have for the next time I want to have meatballs. And then, um, this one is just ready for whatever. Yeah. All right. Anita, can you hear us? Anita. Hi there. Hi, how are you? Good. All right. We just started. So the only thing we've done so far is the ziti and meatballs. Um, and all we did was put our crushed tomatoes, our meatballs, and two capfuls of Mamma Mia in the bag. That worked. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, ziti squeezy. <laughs> um, Dorothy, this is Anita. Anita, this is Dorothy. Hello. <laughs> Um, and Dorothy, just another oh, yeah. tip that I have for you is that when you go to put these in your freezer, what I highly, highly suggest is to kind of lay them flat like this. Um, so when they freeze flat, they stack really, really nicely in your freezer. Okay. And I'll kind of share a little more about that as we go along. I need it done. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, that is one piece, yes. <laughs> Anita's done a couple workshops with me before, so she's a little, as I like to say, a seasoned freezer workshop. <laughs> um, Dorothy's a, a newbie, so we're going to be gentle with her, Anita, okay? Yes, please. Yep. I'm going slow, I'm just trying not to. <laughs> uh, no worries. And if I go too fast, I always tell people, tell me to slow down, just yell at me. I just tend to go and like, I get in the zone that like, you know how people get a runner's high. I get a, a no, I, don't. <laughs> I have, I have run. I am an athlete. I have never yeah. ever found that runner's high. I don't know where it comes from. Um, okay. So I got the meatballs and the tomatoes. I put the water or no, no, just the no meatballs. olive oil. Nope. Okay. I'm done. You're done. So what you're going to do when you go to prep or put it, or cook it, I should say. You're gonna literally throw the meatballs and sauce all in the crock pot. Then you are, whoop, I switched my page. I'm like, that says chicken. <laughs> um, then you will cook it, um, make your pasta. You can put your pasta in it with it, cooked or uncooked, totally your call. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, you stir in the half and half. You kind of basically start with step two. Okay. All right, perfect. So I put this in the freezer now. Yep, that can go right in the freezer. And then perfect. the next one okay, we is do... like still try not to eat a ton of pasta. You can just okay. eat it without the pasta. Yeah, totally. You know, and you could do. I've done that one with zoodles. If oh. he does, yeah. Hmm, that's a good idea. Does he do zoodles? Yes. Okay, then absolutely. Zoodles with that is so good. I probably when we make it, that's probably what I would do is I the kids will all eat the pasta for sure. But I tend to usually just, especially now with zucchini being like crazy, um, yeah. you know, just spiral it up and um, you'll be good. All right. There you go. All right. So next one is creamy spinach and herb chicken. So you're going to want your chicken that you have. I got to find mine. Oh, this is the chicken thighs. Just a reminder if you can't figure out which one it is. 
And again, you're, when you put it either in your bowl, or you're getting it ready to prep. Again, I always roll the bag. So you've got a little bit of a space here and it helps it stand up nice. I'll be honest with you guys. I am not a huge chicken thigh person. I don't like dark meat. Um, PJ doesn't like dark meat, but Isaac and Evie, yeah, they're okay with it. Uh, Gary, we'll just eat it because it's food. Um, and it's not a vegetable, right? Um, so yeah, so with this one, this is a great one because this is just dump and go. We're literally gonna put the first four ingredients, uh, or excuse me, we're gonna put the soup, the broth, spinach and herb, garlic, garlic, right in here. Um, and then afterwards, you can make a cream sauce using the cream cheese. So you can kind of put your cream cheese aside, or if you're someone that, um, for like, you might just use accidentally use the cream cheese for something else, what I tell people is take your block of cream cheese and put it in another bag with it and bag your bags and throw that in the freezer. You can easily, you can freeze cream cheese, just so you know, it is a thing. Um, so that way it's like literally grab and go. All your meal is ready to go. I like that idea. Yes. That's kind of right, what I used to do. Everything in the bag. Yes. Yeah, so cream, the chicken soup, the chicken broth spinach and herb, garlic, garlic, and your thighs. Don't put the cream cheese yet in the bag. All right, so cream of chicken soup. Gary did my um, shopping for this one. Which, there's that, um, and which is wonderful, but it's so funny to me. I'm like, I'm such a rule follower. I love him to death, but there's one of the things that calls for cream and mushroom soup. Now, if I was shopping, I'd be like, well, Gary doesn't do cream of mushroom soup, so I would get another cream of chicken. And he totally bought the cream of mushroom soup, so I give him a lot of props. <laughs> I So when I did grocery shopping for this, I did it in sync cart through Aldi's and Wegmans. Yeah. Just to see which one would be cheaper. Ah. I saved $130 at Aldi's. Yeah, oh, I did the exact same gosh. thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's crazy. I know. Wow. Like, seriously, that's crazy. I know. Cause I never have a list of exactly what I'm going to buy. I so know I've done that before, but I did it yesterday or not yesterday, Thursday. Yep. So needless to say, I got it at Aldi's. Uh, yeah. And I will tell you what, Aldi has stepped up their game for sure. I mean, they, yeah. I, personally, I would rather shop at Aldi any than any place. I honestly, I don't like Wegmans. Sorry, I'm recording this. I probably shouldn't say that, but um, it's just not my favorite grocery store. It just isn't. I like it for certain things. I hate grocery shopping. Yeah. Ever, but I do like the prepared foods. Yeah. Well, and now you're making your own prepared foods. Oh, I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> so um, just so you know, it calls for two tablespoons of spinach and herbs. So just one capful of your spinach and herb. One. And then, oh, yep, go ahead. Right. Sorry, I was just talking to myself. Oh, that's okay. And then for the garlic, garlic, it calls for one tablespoon. Um, so it's just a half a capful. All right, so two tablespoons is a whole capful. You got it, girl. If you find that your seasonings are clumping because of moisture, I want you to know that's actually a good thing. And okay, so I'm going to explain why. Um, just because that's natural. Like that's a typical thing that it should do. Um, seasonings that don't clump usually um, have artificial stuff in it um, that is an anti-clumping agent. Um, so I think people get nervous when they're like, oh my God, my seasoning's clumping. I'm like, no, that's normal. Just break it up with a spoon. You know, that's totally fine. Um, and that's why you're going to see that so many of the Tastefully Simple products have that TS Eat Well. I'm going to put that up here. Maybe you can see it here. Um, so anytime you see oh, that- yeah thing is there's nothing artificial it's all clean ingredients so like mama mia marinara used to be didn't used to be a ts eat well product um because it had that anti-caking agent in it um and then they were a, they were like well listen we want to make it clean so they took that out of the um equation if you will um and now it's eat well because there's nothing artificial in it so just a little tip um, I have made this dinner before. This is a huge fan favorite. Um, definitely you could do it over pasta. 
I also tell people this is super delicious over riced cauliflower. Ooh. Yes. So I love, I love cauliflower. I do too. Like I definitely, you could do it over brown rice too. So like kind of choose your own adventure this way with this one. Um, so little alternatives, if you want to go a little healthier and stuff like that too. And again, you want to flatten it out and put, I forgot to mention this. When you flatten it out, kind of push some of that air out because air is the enemy to the freezer. Sorry, Dorothy, go ahead. That's okay. So I don't put the cream cheese in or I do. You do not put it in. If you want to, take another bag like this and put the cream block of cream cheese in there and then put this bag in there too. Oh, that's okay. It's grab and go. Oh, so smart. <laughs> I've done it many, many, actually, you know what? I am going to do that because I cream cheese is something that tends to go in our house. Same here. Where's my block of cream? I must've left it in the fridge. Thank you for that reminder. All right, so let's try that again. So we're gonna put that back in this one. So yeah, I think what I will do with this one, this will be a nice one too for like Isaac has a soccer game or whatever. I could see this being like a soccer night where it's cooking all day. I come home, I eat dinner, and then we go out to the game and rice cauliflower. But then it will definitely, I could just leave it on warm and he could have it after the game too. All right, now I'm gonna put that one. Okay. Anita, how you doing? Good. Okay, no questions? Um, not so far. Okay, sounds good. So next one we're doing is garlic, garlic, beef stroganoff. Go ahead, Anita. I was wondering if you were going to do the pasta part. And I'm like, she didn't tell us to pre-boil our pasta or anything. So. No, no, keep it simple. All right. Garlic, garlic, beef, stroganoff. All right. So for this one, you've got your cubed beef stew meat. You're going to add to that bag your beef broth, your mushrooms if you want. <laughs> Gary White would freak out if I did that. Um, you could easily do any vegetable though. Like I know technically a stroganoff has mushrooms in it, but you know, you could do carrots if you wanted. It'd be a beef and carrot stroganoff. Um, so kind of play with it if you need a different vegetable or whatever. Um, one medium onion chopped. I'm not going to do an onion because again, Gary White will freak out if I do that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to actually, I have tastefully simple onion, onion. So I can get all the onion flavor without any of the actual onion. Um, then you're gonna add your garlic, garlic and your spinach and herb. Um, onion is the best part. I agree, but whatever. Um, I'm picky, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna tell you that's all you want to do in this. And then when you go to go ahead and cook it, you are gonna put it all in the crock pot and then go from step two. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Two cups of beef broth. Again, I don't measure. This is how I measure when I'm doing cups. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, looks good. Um, the way I count is about a cup a count. Uh, broth, no mushrooms, onion. So if you want to make this a full onion, one medium onion chopped, I would say do about two, two capfuls, two to three capfuls. I'm going to do two capfuls of onion, onion. Dorothy, how did drop off go? Yeah, it was devastating. Oh, I'm like a college. Thank God. Yes, her, her first baby went to college this week at Nazareth. <laughs> he's loving it. The first day was touch and go because they like, he's actually rooming with his best friend, but oh. they set them up. So he was like having to, you know, socialize with people he didn't know. Yeah. So he was like, a little worried about it that first night, but now he's loving every second of it. That's awesome. Who, Which, who's he running with? Brody Martin. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
So they're happy. And Brody's doing good too. They're happy. Good. Which makes it easier. Oh, for sure. For sure. And now today must be moving for everyone else or is that tomorrow? Yeah. No, I think it's today. Yeah. So what's Pete? Wait, okay. So we got this seasoning. Do I put the water and cornstarch and all that stuff nope. too? That'll come on step two. After it's cooked, you use that to help as a thickening agent. Okay. Um, so what's PJ going to do? So he's currently studying for the ASVAB, the entrance exam for the Army. Oh, good. Yep. Okay. And planning. So he, he really wants to make sure he does it well and takes the time to study for it. So Gary's basically tutoring him. Nice. on a lot of the pieces well and as an eagle scout he'll go in at a higher rank right exactly uh, yes it's always been kind of like part of his thought process with yeah. that um so yeah so he's studying for that um you know it, his motivation hasn't been great but i think now that everyone all of a sudden this past week has like gone yeah, yeah. it's really kind of hitting him and he said that he's i said i think that's gonna happen to you and he goes yeah i think you're right mom and i'm like okay yeah. well, as long as you kind of get it um, oh, but I was thinking about you with the whole Nazareth stuff, but seriously, Dorothy, I'm there every Wednesday night. Oh, okay. So if you ever need anything to be schlepped over there or whatever, um, he could just meet me over at the, um, WRI building and I can get it to him. So okay, that'd be awesome. Yep. I was actually just asking him what he's forgotten, but <laughs> take everybody into town tomorrow on a shuttle they're going to a plaza so he's just gonna oh, yeah. get needed so that's awesome. awesome it was just so nice like because you know dylan and i both went there too right. yeah i come back and like be a student again gary and i took isaac to nazareth for his first uh college tour this summer we figured let's start there we both are familiar isaac's been to basketball camp at nazareth a little bit and um Oh my God. I, I'm not sure if Isaac had more fun or Gary had more fun. I know. It was so cute. Like Gary was like looking at all the things and like me, I'm like, I'm there every week already. So I'm kind of like used to that being back and everything. Right. So, um, it's just interesting to see it through his eyes and everything. I don't know. The whole thing's been fun. Yeah. Well, and it's so nice because like I was talking, my friend went to, her daughter went to UB yeah. and like she just like a shuttle and she got lost on the first day. And I'm like, literally, yeah, it's, like it's, everything is 10 minutes and walking distance. How easy is that? Oh, yeah. It's a community. It's the yeah. best, I, in my opinion. I always liked it. So, exactly. um, which dorm is he in? Carney. Oh, first, second, third floor? Second, 239. All right. They were in Lords originally, and I'm like, no, you're going <laughs> to want to socialize and meet people. You need to move. So they switched it. Dylan was in Carney his first year, too. So it's gotcha. like, there you it's, go. Gary was too. I never had Kearney. I was in Madai. Where were you? Madai my first year. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, hard to be people there. It was. But I, you know what? My roommate and the girl across the hall and I are all still like very, very, we were all in each other's weddings. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. All right. Sorry. We'll, we'll stop reminiscing, Anita. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. I was just playing with my meat. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Let's go to perfectly tender pulled pork. So you have yeah. your two pounds of boneless pork loin roast cut into three pieces. What did you decide to do instead, Dorothy, for your office? I did pork for this one, but the other one I didn't. Okay. Very good. So yeah, so you, you can easily make any of these meats swappable. I always tell people they're interchangeable. Some people yeah. like pork, some people don't. Um, just find a similar cut of meat. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, so for this one, you're going to do can of cream, a uh, can of chicken cream soup, um, a half a cup of Bayou bourbon, some onion, onion, some garlic, garlic. That's it. Put it in there. It is the best, sweetest. Oh my gosh. This is some really good pulled pork. Have you ever made this before, Anita? No. Can I okay. ask a question on the last one though? Yes, of course. Um, were we supposed to do the whipped cream cheese in the seasonings? Were you supposed to put the cream cheese in this one? No. Uh, well, you could if you wanted to put the cream cheese. Yes, I'm sorry. You could have put the cream cheese to the side with it um, and put it in the freezer. I'm going to kind of, yeah, you could. I forgot to put that in there. Oh, okay. Shoot. Otherwise, we were just doing the meats and the pork, the meat and the, the yep. other ingredients in a bag, yep. right? Yeah. Okay. 
sorry, my bad. No, nope, no, nope, you're fine. Clearly, you don't have to be a professional to do this. <laughs> it is good news because I am far from. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to give you my trick for Bayou bourbon and measuring. Uh, so this calls for a half a cup. Usually I tell people like to the green line is about a quarter cup and then go down to where it says ingredients. That's going to be about a half a cup. Mm -hmm. So if you pour it to where it says ingredients, you should be good. It may be a little higher, but oh well. We're going to use, we only use it in one other. I take, yeah. you know what? I think I lied. I think I was thinking of honey teriyaki. Bring it down. Have you all poured it yet? Yeah. Okay, you're fine. It's awesome. I, no you're not going to hurt it. It's going to be delicious. Have you guys had Bayou bourbon before? Yes. No. Oh. What do you use it for, Anita? Uh, mostly pork. Yeah. Yeah, we've really we've really experimented since um, I don't know. This is what my third freezer meal workshop. Yeah. Is. I, um, yeah, we've we've really started experimenting with all of the seasonings and sauces. Yeah. And even though we don't um, like follow a recipe per se, um, we find that anytime you incorporate the seasonings and the sauces. Yep. And then you freeze the meat, it comes out so much better. Yes. Than just, than just doing it like right there and then Gosh. cooking. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up because I think it gives it that, you know, that time to really marinate. I mean, and just kind of like infuse all those flavors and everything like that. But that's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Dor Dorothy, do you guys do salmon? No. You don't do salmon. I'm allergic to fish. Okay. Well then don't like do that. not salmon, but like shellfish. But I'm always yeah, yeah, worried. Yeah. So I always, I always ask that because I know people who love salmon, like they order the Bayou bourbon, like it's candy. Like they <laughs> are always buying because there's like, there's no other better salmon. Um, the other way that I tend to use the Bayou bourbon is um, with meatballs. So if you oh. want a meatball, like, you know, a cocktail meatball or something mm -hmm. like that, you cannot go wrong with a half a cup of Bayou bourbon, maybe a little bit of water just to kind of thin it out and meatballs in the crock pot. It, it's amazing. All right. So there is that meal. I'm going to flatten it and get a lot of air out for whatever reason. I have a lot of air in this one. This one I think is a perfect one for if you like if football season, if that's a big deal to you guys, or like you're going camping. I think this is actually a really good camping meal because everyone just kind of scoops out and enjoys it. All right, look at us. We got four meals down. One, two, three, four, yes. Which one is that? All right, next oh, okay. one. You good? The slow cooked chicken dinner? Yes. Okay. Slow cooked chicken dinner. Chicken, chicken, winner, winner. Um, for this one, again, this is the one that called for the mushroom soup. I'm shocked that Gary did mushroom soup, but whatever. Um, we are going to put it all in one bag. It does say to kind of um, separate a little bit. Um, well, I should say this. We're not going to put the stuffing in with the bag, but we're going to bag the stuffing with everything, if that makes sense. So what you're going to do in your bag, you're going to add your chicken, your onion, onion. I'm just double checking before I mess up. You're going to put your soup and your milk in there. Um, and your Swiss cheese. Yes, yeah. All right, so I'll say that again. Onion, onion, chicken, Swiss cheese, soup, and milk. A 
How's it going with your room, Evie? If you come, I'm just talking to Evelyn, excuse me, guys. If you come across a costume or something. Yeah, I have a bunch of costumes. Okay. Um, yeah, and we can sell those or give them back to the studio to earn money or whatever. So. Okay, very good. Um, I have right. some numbers. That's okay. If you, you could add it yeah, when you want to. Okay, good. Yeah, put them all in a separate thing and we'll take care of that. Right. Add in a little milk. And it called for shredded Swiss, and this is what I get when Gary goes to get That's shredded. what I got, too. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, well, my guess is Aldi doesn't send a shredded or sell shredded Swiss, so. Hey, and Kathy, sorry. We're going a little bit against what the book says and adding yeah. the yep. milk. We're just throwing it all in there except oh, for the God. actual stuffing. I just, I don't know why they think to do that. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. I've always done it to get, I've made this before. Big fan favorite in my house. Um, I've always put it all together. Where's my shredder? Are you using like half a block, Kath? Yeah, yep, that's kind of what my plan is. So I do love cheese, and now I'm like, oh, I have half a block to enjoy after. <laughs> Maybe we should make some Swiss cheese, grilled cheese. Would that be good? Some right? sour bread. Yeah. yeah. And maybe I'll like, that Taste Really Simple has that um, sweet pepper jalapeno jam. So maybe a what little of that with it. What is it? Sweet pepper jalapeno jam. Oh. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's so yummy. All right. Or, you know, one other, go ahead. No, I'm just talking to myself again, sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. One other way I've done, like, grilled cheese that I love to do is um, I take, well, first of all, do you guys do your grilled cheese with mayo instead of butter? I have done it before, yes. That I is my go-to. I find it definitely the best way. I don't burn it as much. And what I'll do is actually I'll mix the mayo with one of the tastefully simple seasonings and then spread it on. And it seasons oh. the bread with a really fun flavor. So like the spinach and herb, I think would taste good with the Swiss or like the garlic, something like that. I They used to have a pizzeria seasoning. Anita, did you pick that pizzeria seasoning up when they had it? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so it had cut. So I think it was like 2016, they used to have this pizzeria seasoning. It was my favorite Tastefully Simple product ever. And then they brought it back for like a month in March and it sold out because it was so popular again, but they haven't brought it back again. So I'm like, please bring it back. There was a warm pizza cheesy dip or something, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that was something a little different. That was good too. And now there's a, another cheese ball, Supreme Pizza Cheese Ball. Yep, I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> so good too. So, so uh, good. I don't have the package. Oh wait, the stuffing. Never mind. Don't. Oh yeah. I was like, that's not in my box, but it's not because it's just stuffing. Okay. So that's all we put in it. We don't put the butter in, right? Oh, we lost. It. Am I frozen? Oh, now you're not. Okay, oh. sorry about that. Um, so two things you could do. You could take this and put it in the bag with your chicken dinner, and that way it's grab and go. Another thing I have done, and this is what I'm gonna do, take a Sharpie and write on the, like put a ginormous X on the box <laughs> and just write for slow cook chicken dinner. It's just a little cue to myself, like, don't you dare use this for anything else. Not that I would be doing stuffing. 
for anything else right now, but. All right, I'm gonna put my cheese away and then we will move through. We've done five meals and we're all only 40 minutes into everything. Look at us go. Such a good feeling. All right. The next one is the chicken enchilada soup. And guys, this is one of my favorite soups ever. Yeah. I love this. This makes a ton too, just so you know. So you definitely will have leftovers. Um, and I always tell people when it comes to soup, I love to freeze my soup into individual containers and then have them for lunch the next day. All right, so for this one, we are going to do black beans, one can, uh, two cans fryer roasted tomatoes, undrained, the black beans are drained, uh, two cans enchilada sauce, frozen corn, onion, onion, garlic, garlic. Um, I would not put your cheese in with this one. You'll just do that on the end. So basically everything except for the cheese and the toppings. I love this meal. All right. This will put a whole new spin on your Taco Tuesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> Undrained. This is one that I will tell you too, because it's going to be super duper heavy and very full. Um, you may want to put a second bag over this one just to make sure in case it splits a little bit because it's just so chock full of all the goodness. All right, fire roasted. It called for that salsa verde, right? Well, guess what Gary got me? Regular salsa. Okay. My Aldi's person sent me avocado salsa. Oh, so that sure. sounds really good. You think it would be good? Oh, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. That stuff. I can't wait to hear and how it works with that. I don't have the enchilada sauce. So I'm just going to add that when I cook it. Okay, that's fine. Because they didn't have any Aldi's. And when I look, yep, that's exactly right. Because I had to order mine from Tops. Um, what I will tell you is right on your bag, don't forget enchilada sauce. Oh, good idea. Give yourself the cue to remind yourself with all those pieces. It's funny. I can't believe that Aldi doesn't have enchilada sauce. Meanwhile, if you go to our save a lot, you're going to find all the enchilada sauce you want, all different kinds. Such a heavy Mexican flair there. Yes. I like it there. I, I love save, and it's great for me because it's literally right down the road. Yeah. Save a lot's neat is gross, though. You think so? See, yeah. Because they have their own butcher. It's, I can't, every time we've ever had it, it's just like no one wants to eat it because it's just oh, their own butcher. Dreamy. Interesting. I've never had it. Too. All right. Oh, I probably should put my taste really simple and that would be smart. All right. One and a half tablespoons of onion, onion. And one teaspoon of garlic, garlic. I'm going to probably do two teaspoons because I like a little extra garlic. All right. Sealing this puppy up. I've been adding extra seasoning every time. What's that? I've been adding extra seasoning every time. Get that. Okay. Okay. So first of all, look how pretty this is. I just love all the colors in here. Now, if I had the green, it'd be even prettier, but um, I just think it's such a pretty little bag. All right. Now we massage our meat, right? We just kind of get a little intimate with it. We give it a good stir. And yeah, I'm definitely going to put a second bag around this one just because um it's super duper full and you just you don't want to ruin that at all 
Oh, it smells so good though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Salsa. The salsa doesn't go in. Yes. No. I put the salsa right in. Okay. Does it? Did I mess that up? I don't see it on the list. Ah, I definitely messed that up. Never mind. <laughs> I thought this called for salsa verde. Never mind. Yeah. Don't put that in. Again, you do not need to be a professional to do this. <laughs> It'll still be delicious. I have a feeling. Kathy, in one of the early, I think one of the first freezer meals I did, there was a honey barbecue jalapeno. Yes, I know. Yep. Has that ever come back or? No. What would you use as a substitute? Because we really liked the meal. It was okay. like the bow tie pastas. We substituted it, called it for sausage. We substituted hamburger. But it was a very cheesy, creamy, with a little bit of a kick. With a little kick. I really loved it, but oh. I've not been able to find something that. Here's what I would think. I'm going to think for a minute. Hold on. I'm going to tell you, where is it? Where is it? Maybe I don't have it. Yes, I do. So I would take, the. this is new, cheesy chive warm dip mix. I'm obsessed with this. This was out my second year as a consultant and was has always been my favorite from Tastefully Simple. So I would say this cheesy chive and then for your extra kick, uh -huh. um, add the Fiesta. Oh, okay, yep. So that gives it the kick. The only thing you're missing is that sweetness. Was the honey, it wasn't, it was a honey barbecue seasoning. I, okay. Um, so you could just add actual honey or instead of Fiesta, you could also do this. This is new, a maple bacon. Smoke. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm almost wondering if those two together might make that work too. Okay. Perfect. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So total side note, this is one powerful little jar. So it is a smaller jar, but it's not the mini jars, just so you can see. It's like a medium-sized jar. Um, it pans, packs a punch. It packs a punch, not, it packs a punch of flavor. Like there's a little small kick. So when I did my, uh, I did chicken wings last night and I am not a great chicken wing cooker. I've never been able to get it right. And Gary and I were like, oh my God, best chicken wings I've ever made. And I use this as like a dry rub, uh -huh. air fried them for 10 minutes. Then I flipped them, air fried them for another eight. And then we dipped the wings into the smoky bacon barbecue sauce. Gotcha. Holy Moses, best wings ever. Good. Yes. All right, moving on. Bayou bourbon and beer brisket. All right. So we've got our brisket. I got to go get my beer. If you don't have beer, you could use any cola, any soda. And honestly, you could also use orange juice, anything that has some acidity or carbonation. The reason why you add it to it, it adds that tenderization. Does that make sense? Yep. So I forgot to get, I don't have soda or beer. Should I wait till later to do this one? Um, no, you could totally make it now and just add the beer at the end. That's fine. Okay, I can like add it like later today or yeah. something. No problem. Um, Evelyn, can you hand me a beer? Evelyn, beer me, please. Uh, <laughs> right here in that fridge right there. I'm not making beer bread, no. There's just that blue light one right here. Yep. Because it goes in here. You know what, Dorothy? I think I didn't put it on the official list and I just, I'm realizing that I was like, oh, cause people are gonna come over and I'll just give them the beers. I wasn't thinking, that's my bad. I take that on. Fine. You can just have Evelyn drop me off a beer too. Okay, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going 315 with our beer. We're doing Labatt Blue Light, that's right. 
Nothing fancy here. Um, so tell Evelyn when she's in the middle school, if she needs a break or like not having a good day, she's welcome to come to the library. Is that where you were at? Yes, and there's couches and she can I just I know, chill. I went to the library um, on Thursday and I went right to the seat that was open. That was yeah. Yay! Yeah, so anytime. I'm there all the time. Oh, Dorothy, that's awesome. Good it's to know. It's like the best thing ever. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. I am so excited for her to go to the middle school. I think it's- Yeah, I mean, it can be a lot. Oh, for sure. But, for sure. I mean, it's middle school, let's be honest. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but I, she's- She's so ready for it too at the same time. Like, yeah. yeah. PJ, I was very nervous. Isaac, I was like, meh. He was, Isaac's group was the very first fifth grade group to be the middle schooler. Oh. So that was kind of the apprehension there. But um, she's ready. She's absolutely ready. Yeah. Oh, so good. You put the whole beer in there too? Whole beer, uh, three quarters cup of your Bayou bourbon. And something just fell over. Okay. Um, and then a half a cap full of onion onion. And that's that. Now, if you wanted a nice Sunday dinner and you wanted to make your house, like do like a Sunday brisket, you could easily put this in the oven too, guys. You don't have to do it in the crock pot. Oh. I'm all about my crock pot. <laughs> It's in my crock pot works for me. That's what I say. And these cheddar garlic mashed potatoes that are on the second side of it, so good. Also, if you want a really good mashed potato, I'm gonna come back to my favorite here, that cheesy chive. I mix in a, with my potatoes. I do a cheesy chive and some cream ah. cheese. The best potatoes ever. <laughs> All right, now is where you need that salsa verde that I didn't do right, so there's that. Um, so this is the Fiesta pork tacos, but you're doing beef tacos? Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> I'm out of, I only got one can of chicken broth. And that's okay, so. Beef broth would work or no? Yeah, yeah, throw it in there. Right. Totally fine. See, oh wait, this is. Yeah, okay, that works. Yeah, you're good. So you're adding your salsa verde. And apparently, yeah. can't for this um, you're adding one cup of whatever broth you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you're adding one tablespoon of that Fiesta seasoning, which um, is a little mini Fiesta, which I think is so cute. Um, how much am I doing of chicken broth? There we go. And that one you might want to measure or just do a cap full of it. You'll be fine. I actually have a Fiesta somewhere. What does this taste like? Fiesta? Mm -hmm. It's spicy. It's kicky. It's definitely one of those that I typically actually, you can, oh, I just put Mama Mia in. <laughs> so we're going to have Italian fajitas <laughs> at my house. <laughs> Here. Uh, it's just inclusive. Yeah. You're just being inclusive. That's right. <laughs> I love that. That's exactly right. Um, Fiesta is probably the one that is not my favorite. Like if someone were to say, you know, Kathy, what don't you like? It's not my favorite, but I like it as a flavor helper. I'll never make it as a dip, but there are people who swear by this as like their favorite dip ever. If you're making like a seven layer taco <laughs> dip, I know people like say like this is their secret ingredient to it. Um, so I, well, again, I use it as a flavor helper, but other people like are obsessed with it. All right. It smells good to me. So good. All right, here we go. We're making our Fiesta pork tacos that I completely messed up. And you know what? That's okay. It tastes really simple. We're not well, I'm curious to see how it tastes. I know, right? <laughs> We shall see. Here I got like the most ginormous pork ever. I'm like trying to cut it in like all these sections. I'm like, oh my God. 
Um, I, I again, this one's a heavy one, so I am gonna double bag this one for me. Uh, so if you want to do that, feel free. And we are almost done. I know this is so good. I'm so glad I did this. Dorothy, that makes me so happy that you did it too. Yeah. I, Before, like, we, I never ate meat. So it was like, eh. then I started eating it again a while ago. I didn't so realize like, that. What changed you? Uh, I don't know. I just felt like I wasn't, didn't have any energy. Ah. You know, I was a vegetarian. It was probably like 27 years. I know you were. Yeah. But yeah, so I did. I don't eat a ton of it. Sure. But now it's nice that like I can make things. And yep, I hear you. I hear you. All right. So the next one is a simple cassoulet. That's how you say it. And I always say it. I know how to say it because cassoulet is fun to say. Uh, so that's see. <laughs> um, it's French. Just so you know, it makes it sound very, we oui, we oui, very fancy, right? Um, so this one should have your chicken um in your kielbasa right in there if you haven't had a chance to do the kielbasa that's okay that was my bad you're gonna do two cans of your great northern beans or cannonelli i never know how to say it cannelli cannonelli i don't know uh two of those um a little more chicken broth or white wine uh a little parsley if you want i'm not gonna do the parsley i'm actually gonna use the spinach and herb because i don't have parsley um <laughs> what are you gonna use I'm just going to use the tastefully simple spinach and herb. You basically oh. want herby flavor with this. Um, I just don't want to deal with another spice. So, um, and then onion, onion, garlic, garlic, black pepper. You're literally just, this is a dump and go type of recipe. And then, as I always tell people, I love serving dinner in a bowl. My family eats the whole bowl. I don't know what it is about dinner in a bowl, but everyone eats it. So sometimes I'll be like, oh, it's taco night. And like, I'll just make like rice and then taco meat and then something else. And they eat the whole thing. So whatever. All right. All right. All right. So beans. Rinse. Oh yeah. You're going to drain those beans, by the way. Is Ro uh, not Ron? Is Brody doing any fall sports? No, I'm just gonna do track. Okay, indoor and outdoor. He needs to like buckle down and do some freaking work. Oh, well, his is grades were so bad last year, and I'm like, okay. oh, you're probably not gonna get in a college. Great. <laughs> oh, he'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. Oh my gosh. A senior I'm working on a seal project this summer, so hopefully that gets done. Gotcha. Isaac just started his uh what's it called? His Eagle Scout. Oh he did? Yep. So he's doing? he's doing something similar, kind of similar to what PJ did. So he's making flag drops for the um for a damaged flag or whatever that wants to be burned. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so he's gonna make a couple of those to go around the town. Um, and so actually he's putting them together tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. So Gary, his goal is to have it all done by the end of, like by Christmas for sure, be done. Yeah, that's our goal too. Yep. Add the chicken broth. I did. Okay. This one I'm excited to try. I'm very. I'm curious to see how the family reacts to this one too. I don't know if they're gonna mm. like it or not. It'll be interesting. I think I'll think I am. You put in garlic and herb. I'm gonna do that too. Do I have that spinach oh, and herb? Spinach and herb. 
spinach and herb, yep. So I just did like a cap and a half of that spinach and herb. It definitely gives it a nice green look and a herby look. And they say to add it with brown rice or enjoy it with brown rice. But again, you could do this over cauliflower rice easily. This would be a really nice protein based dinner. Yes. I love beans too. Like I love I do too. I'm a huge bean fan. My beans favorite, but yep. And Gary will eat black beans. That's a win. Hey, Gary. <laughs> Oh dear. All right, that one's going to the side for me. And we have our last one. Just... Oh, wait. I need broth. Did we lose her again? Oh, can you not hear me? Oh, I was just reading. <laughs> okay, <laughs> read aloud. No, that's okay. So, um, I just didn't want to go ahead. If you are you guys all done with the castle, you're still working. No, just give me one second. Take your time. I have a confession. Hit us. I skipped that one, <laughs> and that's okay. Are you not a lasagna fan? Oh no, I'm a lasagna fan. I'm not the 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 previous one. Oh, the cassoulet. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Not your favorite? Not your thing? No, it, it didn't appeal to me as I was reading the ingredients, so. Gotcha. And that's okay. Your confession. Just say two Hail Marys. You'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you being honest with us. <laughs> I got to get one more crushed crushed. Dorothy, are you going to be the corn kernel again or popcorn kernel? Are you even doing popcorn anymore? You're probably not even doing oh, that. No. You're done. I haven't done it years. Is Hazel doing Boy Scouts though? She's done now. Yeah, I wondered. She is only nine. Okay. So we're going to look for a troop this year and I'm going to have her start in September. She really wants to. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm excited for her. She's good. And I'm excited to have her and Dylan go camping for a week. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Love so. it. See ya. See ya. Okay, so the slow cooker lasagna is going to be like three different bags. Just so you know, you're going to have a meat bag, you're going to have a cheese bag, and then you're going to have a sauce bag. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. I don't think I have more bags. Ah, shoot, I should have told you to do, get more. You could use sandwich bags, honestly, if you have sandwich bags. I do, I think. Okay, yeah, the cheese won't be too much. You'll be able to fit it in a sandwich bag. All right, so in your meat bag, you're going to add your onion, onion, and your garlic, garlic. Because what you're actually going to do is um, brown up your meat uh prior to cooking it okay so this one might not be on a busy one to do on a busy morning <laughs> um if you're trying to just like put dump and go or brown your meat the night before and then dump and go in the morning okay meat and seasonings Okay, that's bag one. Bag two, um, you are going to add crushed tomatoes, tomato sauce, and four tables, or four, let me start, four tablespoons of Mamma Mia or two catfuls. And I think, honestly, you probably could fit that in a, in a small baggie or a quart size if you have a quart size. I thought I had a quart size. Thank you. 
Yeah, I definitely should have gotten a bigger bag. Maybe the sandwich bag, maybe not. Be close. All right, here's the question. Can openers, are you a side can opener, a top can opener, or an electric can opener? I am electric. Electric. I can't use the electric because the cat thinks I'm opening tuna fish. Oh my God, too funny. So I have to use the side. Use the side. <laughs> the hand crank one because yep. otherwise she goes crazy. I'm the same. Well, I'm, not, I'm a side. My mom loves the Pampered Chef top one. I'll tell you what, I cannot figure that thing out. My, I know. I don't get it. Ah, there goes my sauce. Whoops. You know. Live TV. Here we go. Just so it's, fine. it's fine. Okay. We're just going to put that to the side and I'll take care of that when we're all done. You know. All right. So I messed that up. Um, okay. Let's make our cheese mix. So you're going to do three cups of shredded mozzarella. Uh, ricotta and Parmesan cheese. If you want, you don't have to do the cheap Parmesan cheese if you don't want to. Um, I don't know if I put that on. Did I put that on our list? Uh, uh, yeah. Did I tell you to get Parmesan cheese? No. It was on the um, inventory list, I think. Oh, oh yeah. It was? Okay. That might have been my bad if I messed that up. I apologize. Um, I'll be right back. I have to get another bag. All right, cheese, ricotta, parmesan. All right, let me try this again. I'm gonna put my sauce. Actually, I'll do that in a minute. Let's do my cheese. There we go. I found out that Isaac doesn't like, shoot, what kind of cheese was it? I was like, what is wrong with you? I think, it was, like, I think it was something like, cheddar cheese or something like that or like oh it was a white cheddar cheese like I'm like what what is wrong with you yeah, it's pretty sharp but it just makes it so flavorful right it, but he loves a Colby Jack and he loves mozzarella I don't know boys are weird yeah they really are stupid and weird but um all right so I've got that then if you have the parmesan add it I don't know why I don't but I don't um like yeah you could totally use that absolutely um dorothy too when it comes to the lasagna noodles same thing if you want to bag your lasagna noodles so you know that you don't use them yeah. go for it or you know use the sharpie and write on the box and say to use with and yes you do put the lasagna noodles right in the crock pot with it okay such a cool dinner. Yeah, it's really kind of cool the way it all kind of comes together. I've made this many times um, and it's everyone loves it. And it also makes you feel like you slaved over a lasagna on a set, like, you know, like your mom used to, and you definitely didn't. <laughs> um, and then this one, if you want, bag all your bags into one and then you're good. And if you're like me, you're going to try and scrape the rest of that sauce before it goes to waste. Well, the real question is, which one should I make first? Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> that is a good question. What do you think you'll do? I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe the spinach herb one. That sounds yeah. really funny. All right. Anita, uh -huh. how you, which one do you think you're going to do? Um, 
Well, we still have some summer left. It'll probably be one of the meat ones. Um, yeah. Pasta for the winter. Yeah. Gotcha. I usually um, vacuum seal everything. Ah. Well. It, it makes it last just that, you know, guaranteed to go a little bit longer. That's actually a great question. How long do they last in regular bags? You know what? As long as you got your air out, I usually, um, well, and I, I eat them. So like I plan for them. Um, but I would say, you know, as long as you've got, you haven't gotten any freezer burn, I, I would say anywhere between three to six months. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I we'll eat them all before that. Yeah. Freezers are amazing. And if we use them right, you know, they can really be such a helper in that meal prep situation and really help you kind of make the most out of all your food that you buy in your groceries and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna clean up this amazing pasta saucy mess. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's me. Uh, I hope you learned some things. A little oh, I did, for sure. You did, good, good, good. So my plan is just so you guys know, um, I'm not gonna do one in September, but I will do another one in October probably. They haven't decided which one next. Um, but if you guys look through the catalog and you decide you know what you want to do, let me know. You guys were at this one, so you get first choice. Um, and then I'm also thinking, Dorothy, just so you know, maybe Columbus Day weekend on that Monday, I might do a kid one. Where, yes. So a lot of times, like people don't know what to do with their kids on a day off. So um, I was thinking maybe I would do that. So it'd be awesome. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, but Hazel's like baking so much, but it's like my pants are freaking getting tight. Oh my girl, I can't have all this. I saw your comment. That was so funny. <laughs> what I will tell you, I have her start baking for other people. <laughs> yeah, doing that a little bit too. Yeah. Um, uh, also, this week alone, she made chocolate chip cookies, which we sent to half of them to my grandfather, and then a red velvet cake. <gasps> yeah, she made pretzels and garlic nuts. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm like, oh my God, I can't. So pretzels so and garlic nuts, those will freeze nice too. Yeah. Oh, good idea. I should freeze them. The, oh, the garlic nuts are gone. Uh, like yeah. they ate, I, Brody and came home from work and I was at my friend Robin's and I'm like, oh, Brody's like, they're so good. I'm like, oh, save me at least a bite. He's like, they're already gone. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Just um, take my word for them. They're good, right? That's right. Exactly. exactly. If they were gone, they were good. That's true. Good point. Uh, I also do a kid's uh, cookie workshop in, at, towards Christmas where okay. we make, uh, we prep all the cookie balls for Christmas. And so then like you have a, a plate of balls, um, Sweaty balls. Sweaty balls to throw into your freezer, but then you can make bring the cookies out as you want and bake them and everything like that too. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, guys. Look at that. 10 meals in less in an hour and 15 minutes. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank nice you guys. You. Bye. 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 Oh my god. I don't know how to leave. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.